the last video we show you some of the trims added to the tiny house, how we finished the stone cladding of the first room, which by the way it took weeks but it's nice to see a quick progression, and also some other projects that hover around the overall renovation. Today we start the installation of the tiny house and add the line render on the walls of the stone house. Finally time to start the insulation for the tiny home extension. As we were going to need loads of it and as all sides will be insulated, we opted for a more affordable yet suitable insulation option. Of course, cork insulation for example would have been ideal but it is pretty expensive so we went for a 9cm rock wall. So this is 5 o'clock and Omar is cutting, we're doing the stop work for the walls in the extension where we're going to be adding the toilet, please don't fall. And excuse the mess. Why is this so small? So, so no, this is the roof one. This is one that's going on the on the ceiling. Oh, this this long? Yeah, yeah. I need three of these. Oh, three I eight. see. Okay. Alrighty. I think we might need to treat some more wood, you know. We have run out of wood. Okay. Yeah, you pull that. See, this is me tidying up every day, <laughs> like because there's no cables everywhere. Like this is stuff that no one, no one no appreciates. No one thinks about. Me. Yeah. How <laughs> they're appreciated. Okay, which one do I go to yeah. connect it? You go and connect it. Oh, okay. We'll be having a discussion today about how messy it is in here. It's just... And it's not like... YouTube doesn't like messy places. You're supposed to have really nice pristine places and everything really looking pretty nice and presentable. But it's really difficult when you're dealing with wood and concrete and lime and rocks and sand and all of these really messy materials so we were just discussing how we can make things a little bit more presentable because you know we don't want people to think that we're very messy <laughs> we are slightly but I think it's just gone a little bit overboard here it's pretty good for what it is I but uh, yeah almost like yeah it's fine and I'm like no <laughs> it can be better I think the more the trick is storage and we just don't have it but eventually I think what we're gonna do we're gonna make this into a nice place eventually so we can work on it and it will look sick because it's beautiful and big almost waiting for me <laughs> how many of these do you need? Uh, this is the third one so this would be all of them for the roofs oh you just put in strips of it? yeah three strips and how many? three? three so, so one on the top, one at the bottom, and one, one in the middle. In the So we done yesterday some measurements and I have them all here. We have all the panels with all the dimensions and then we're going to drill them in today. They were cut yesterday and they were pre-drilled. So we can just put them on today and hopefully we can also add the insulation and then get the ball rolling a little bit here. We 
be having a little bit of problem doing that one there. The hypotenuse of that triangle. And it's going to be set right here. So I'm just going to use this and hopefully this will work. So I know it's 98 bottom um, and the top. Set this at 98 bottom and top and it might work. I'm not sure. Then it was time to store the stud work next to the bathroom door so we can add the insulation and then the plasterboard. This will be our bathroom in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I hate this stuff. 105 Then we quickly pivoted into finishing the floor with the OSB. And then I had a floor to stand up so I could continue with the installation. Alrighty, so it's been about three days. We had three days off. Our friend Margot came over and we had an amazing time. Oma has known her for like 20 years and I have known her for like 15. Uh, so it was really good to catch up with people, have barbecues and go to the river, go to Coimbra, have good quality family and friend time. So thank you very much Margot for coming. We enjoyed your company so much. She is a soap maker. She has her business here and it's amazing. It's called Ariana Naturals. And I love the packaging and it's amazing quality. So I'm hoping that when she comes back eventually again, probably this year, hopefully, we can do like a workshop and make soap together and she can teach me some. And then we can show you guys because it's such an amazing art to make your own soap. She also brought us this natural dish soap. So it's really good for the land. So I'm really, really happy with this. And it smells really good. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. I really, really enjoy your company. And I hope one day you guys can um, try them out. She's going to have a website soon. So you can buy some like lemongrass shampoo bar. There you go. The plan today is to finish the stud work and the insulation here. Because we are on a time frame deadline. And I really want to get there because I really want to do the kitchen and so on. So my mom and I can be comfortable in the summer while Omar is away. That would be ideal. So let's continue to finish this room. I've done a lot of work here. What do you think? I'm very proud of it. I'm actually really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> this cat was my birthday present 11 years ago he brought it <laughs> and he said 
Someone needs to take care of this cat for six months while our friends looking for well flat to rent because they didn't <laughs> they, they, they didn't have that was a long time ago. Yeah, they didn't mm -hmm. have the, they weren't allowed to have the cat, but then he stayed with them. He said, you know what, you guys can keep the cat. Hey Tony. We didn't name him by the way. I like that. It. it really suits him. Yeah, it does suit him. He's definitely a Tony. <laughs> As you can see, a lot of the rendering has been done already on the walls of this room, except for one, so we could show you later how it was done. The walls are quite uneven, as they are mostly made of stone, so a couple of layers of coarse rendered was added first, then allowed to dry to add the next layer. You can build up thickness of walls in this way, but if you add too much, it falls down. Line render is always flicked or thrown in order for it to stick to the wall and each other. Three times, so uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Well done. Well, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, and it's leveled. Let me see, put it back again. I want to show you guys. <laughs> of course. It's level. Oh my god. Oh my god. It was so good. Me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the beginning of this project, I was really apprehensive because it's a lot of work and we're not even there yet. Once the plaster's done, it's done. I'm like, okay, this is. We've done yeah, this once before. We have room. Yeah, we've done this before. We've done plastering. We haven't done mm. plastering, but we're going to learn. Um, then we've done tiling, we've done toilets, we've done all of that. It's just this bit that we're like, you know, a bit. Uh, it's you know. a bit embarrassing. We've been here for two months and we've only done this now. We haven't so. been two months yet? Yeah. Really? Two months. We came yeah. first of March. I think we've just been trying to adapt and everything. Well, there hasn't been, it's no excuse. We have gone slow with the extension. Simon's been doing that store because, you know, he's a pro at that and, you know, you have people doing what they need to do what how they do it you know the pros do what the pros do best and we can figure out here <laughs> as we go right we've got to figure out how to do this bit the kitchen so the nerf rack i think we've never done that before mm -hmm. but it's the cheapest option for us to make the kitchen ourselves we just luck with that <laughs> what are you thinking about like well, there should be another one around here because there's quite a lot of space there on there that's oh yeah, for sure. So I'll put one there. So you're gonna have to jig it out. And then another one there and another one at the bottom. Okay, so this is the corner of the bathroom. So Simon has been working mostly over here because these room needs to be as flat as possible because of tiling it's going to be completely tiled on top and um, so we have two different walls here this is a stage two and this is 
a stage 1.2 let's say because it's two layers of rough lime that's been flecked as shown earlier and that's because it's not level um, he's just trying to just have a, a level wall at the moment so he has to layer it you have one layer you let it dry and then you add another layer rough like this you let it dry and then you go and um, move on to stage two which is flicking it but also then smoothing it out a bit but leaving it a little bit rough and then stage three is basically making it smoother and then you know you make it as smooth as possible this is lime and this is Cal Hydraulica HL5 that's the one we use and this is the material that most people use here it's very widely available and this is what most Portuguese people use for lime there's gonna be probably you're gonna be seeing different information about different materials that you can use 3.5, 5.5, hot potty, calviva, whatever. They're all fine, they all do their own thing, they all have their pros and cons. It's all about working with the materials that you widely can get and also the one that you're most comfortable to use. So Simon has been, he learned in Portugal to use lime with um, Cal Hydraulica HL5. That's the one that he uses. And to be honest, when it comes to stone walls, in any case, in any material, with any material that you use, there's three things that you have to look at the most, which is insulation, ventilation, and a good source of heat. The heating it will help uh, the walls to not get too wet or too too cold or too dry, or because too dry is also not good because it crumbles line. You also need ventilation so you don't have any mold or any humidity, and um, insulation so you have, you know, everything gets well protected so those are the things that are really going to be important if you ever work with stone walls because um, those are the three things to look for the ceiling is going to be flat on the on the roof and there's going to be insulation on there as well so you have really good source of insulation and yeah it's just really 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 cool interesting and very exciting so with the rest of the walls apart from this one we're trying to get them also as smooth as possible because our good friend who renovated his ruin a while ago was a very very similar property to this said please get smooth walls if you ever want to put cabinets or anything on the walls it's really difficult so get them as smooth as possible so this is a good thing of knowing people that have done this 20 years ago then you know not only the experience of them doing it but also all the after effects of doing it that way 20 years down the line what I've done differently so we're very lucky here we're very 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 lucky yeah so that's what we've done today okay it's the next day uh, we've pretty much done this wall with all the insulation and uh, right now what I want to do is I want to start doing a bit more stud work around here and um, then we can start plasterboarding basically. So at the moment you have to start thinking about how the walls are going to go in and what's going to attach to what and so uh, yesterday we were putting in these much thicker pieces that were attached to the posts specifically to hold up cupboards. Now um, when we're going to do the wall around here there's not a lot to stick on because of this metal, so we're trying to add on more points for the plasterboard to be attached to the wall. So I'm going to be putting some other extra bits of wood, say here and here, so the wall can be attached to this bit of stud work. And that's my plan today, and also to finish more insulation. And uh, yeah, we really need to hurry things up now, so the pressure's feeling, you know, much greater than before. Okay, so I'm just going to put a junction box ready for the lighting circuit when it goes in. We're not going to put it in just yet uh, because I need somewhere to put the, sh the switch in and um, yeah, so I'm just going to put this up for now and then we can start plasterboarding. And that's going to connect three, three lights? Three spotlights, yeah.
I'm gonna redo all the circuits afterwards. They just. Oh. What do you mean? Well, there's some exposed wires over there. They're no good. It's just that I've roughly put it in there because I just want to get this out of the way. So lying on the floor, getting walked on. It's really messy everywhere. It's a construction site, and then we have a washing machine, and then washing line everywhere, and then stuff outside, and it's... Help! <laughs> I want something organized. I want clean. I just want, to be very honest with you, I just want an area where I can walk straight. <laughs> Not like stones falling all over the place. I just want that. <laughs> Sorry for a little bit of a rant there, but it just shows a glimpse of inner frustrations when you are doing a renovation. There is so much to do always and it gets to a point that you can't quite believe how much you still need to do and also how uncomfortable you are. But it will all be worth it at the end because it will be a family home made from the heart with our hands, our ideas and with incredible people who made it possible. And that includes you. By watching this video, liking and subscribing, you are contributing massively to achieve this dream of living in our land, renovating our ruin and building our forever home. So thank you so much. The next step is to add the plasterboard, work mark on the render, we get the septic tank sorted and maybe even have a new floor. But for now, see you next time. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like and comment below to help us grow our channel.